Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to our interview with Jason Parker. Jason is the author of Sound Retirement Planning Book and fellow host of Sound Retirement Radio and founder of the Retirement Budget Calculator. When his friends were buying Mad Magazine, he was buying Money Magazine. And from a young age, uh, Jason has been a money nerd. Now he has developed a fintech application to help answer the number one question people have as they are preparing for retirement. J Jason, thank you for joining us today in our podcast. Boris, thank you so much. I'm excited to be here. Thanks. Absolutely. It's my pleasure. Jason, could you tell us a short story about your career path? What brought you to where you are right now and what you are up to these days? Well, thank you. Yeah. So I started in this uh, industry and um, developed a or built a SEC registered investment advisory firm. We were doing a lot of financial planning for people. And it was in doing the financial planning for people and looking at our industry that I realized so many people are getting this totally wrong. Too many people in my industry focus on investments and rates of return. And retirement is really all about cash flow. It's all about making sure you have enough income to uh, meet all of your expenses. And so when I developed the retirement budget calculator, it was really just an opportunity, a way to help people organize their spending. And over time, what has happened is we've developed this really comprehensive uh, cash flow calculator that helps people develop three things, three things that we want people to have in retirement, clarity, confidence, and freedom. Clarity to know what's most important in their life, confidence to know the numbers are going to work, and freedom so that they don't have to worry about money so they can go out and live their best life. So that's a little bit of the journey. Mm, fantastic. So I believe that we will have a, a very thoughtful conversation about uh, retirement strategy and challenges uh, with some uh, probably actionable tips that uh, people can uh, actually implement in their life, uh, lives and uh, work, work environment. So, yes. Jason, can you tell us uh, what is a good retirement pl pl planning strategy, uh, best uh, retirement plan is, planning strategy looks like? Maybe it's different for different uh, age uh, categories, but for, from your point of view, what does what uh, people have to uh, uh, bear in mind when they're preparing to, uh, uh, to plan for a retirement? Yeah, great question. And I would say most of the people that are using the calculator that we developed, they're 55 years or older. So they're thinking about retirement. So um, a, a lot of the work that we do is really designed to help serve that community. And we're not really helping people that are 20 years, 25 years old, just getting started with retirement savings. For those folks, it's just a matter of save as much as you can, keep your fees as low as possible and invest aggressively. You know, take a lot of risks because you've got a lot of time. But for people that are getting ready to make the transition into retirement, retirement's all about cash flow. So you need to understand how much do you spend. You, ha you need to have some idea about how long you're going to live. So looking at your family history. And then you need to know how much money you've saved. So those three pieces are really what we help people organize. And once you understand how much money you spend and you have some idea about how long you might live, then you will be able to back into the numbers to understand if you've actually saved enough to be able to retire comfortably. And that's really what we're trying to help people do is to answer the question, have I saved enough? Are we going to be okay? Can we afford to retire? This is one of the biggest financial decisions that people will ever make in their entire life. And so you just want to make sure that you're doing all the due diligence and that you're really trying to understand how this is going to work. Is it going to work? Can you do it? So uh, is it... Uh... Fair question to ask: uh, How much you uh, we I need to retire? For example, if I I have a million now and I want to live, let's say maybe twenty years without thinking, is it enough for me to put it in bank and uh, draw uh, whatever fifty thousand euro every month uh, without thinking? Uh, <laughs> it, that's the number one question everyone wants to know: Have I saved enough? Am I going to be okay? And the way that you do that is first, you need to understand how much you spend. And then in the United States, we have something called Social Security, which is most people have paid into this program that's going to provide some basic amount of uh, retirement income for them every month. And so you sh let's say you've got uh, $100,000 a year is how much you've determined that you spend. And then you, let's say you're going to have $50,000 a year of Social Security. So what you know is that you've got a shortfall of $50,000. So the easiest way, the, the rule of thumb, if you will, is to 
multiply that by 25 and it will tell you whether or not you have saved enough to um, retire comfortably. Now that assumption, Boris, is based on, on the assumption that your money's not just sitting in the bank. It's assuming that you're gonna have 60% of your money in equities and 40% in fixed income and that the future continues to work somewhat like the past did. And there's no guarantee, of course, when you're investing, but that's called the 4% rule. Uh, people can do research and they can look up the Trinity study. So these are some of, the, some of the research that people can do to understand. But those are all rules of thumb. And the problem with rules of thumb is that everybody has a different size thumb. And so instead of trying to use a rule of thumb, we just want people to actually crunch the numbers. Now, the problem for a lot of folks is those, if you try to build a spreadsheet to do this, it can be, get very complicated because there's a lot of moving parts. You're going to have some expenses that start at retirement that aren't going to end or aren't going to go all the way through retirement. And you're probably going to have some higher like medical expenses later in life. You have to account for inflation. You have to account for volatility and rates of return. Um, there's just a lot of moving parts to a good retirement plan and trying to build that spreadsheet is very, very complicated. So that's why we built the software. To, so that people could just plug in their numbers and then see what the results were. Mm -hmm. Yeah, as a, uh, Albert Einstein once said, the uh, compound interest and interest is the eighth wonder of the world, I think. And who, who understands it, earns it, and who, who doesn't, uh, pays it. I so like I that. think, uh, <laughs> yeah. And uh, I think we, we hear a lot of noises about the pension crisis uh, lately. I think in UK, uh, last month, it was kind of almost... Uh, a major pension uh, fund uh, went uh, bust, but because of uh, changes in the government, it was uh, avoided. And I think mm -hmm. uh, also in Europe, uh, in the USA, there are some uh, uh, news that uh, some pension funds invest money, uh, not in uh, safe investment, but in kind of alternative uh, space that uh, people don't know where it's going. Uh, uh, probably some uh, some landed in F F F FTX, uh, Crypto I hope exchange. Not. I hope not. Why? That'd be bad. Yeah, yeah. And on top of that, the uh, standard uh, 60 40 uh, bond uh, stocks portfolio this year was the uh, worst year in the history. <laughs> so, how can the, the average person be sure that uh, uh, what he has invested uh, the entire life uh, for retirement uh, uh, will be taken care of uh, with the utmost care? Is it something, uh, some kind of guarantee available, or you have to? Uh, to, to just rely on yourself? That's a great question. Yes, you're right. It's been a tough year for the market. One of the things I'm always trying to remind people when it comes to being an investor is you have to think in decades, not days. Volatility is very normal for the stock market. So um, now the one thing that I would say about volatility as people are trying to make this transition into retirement is that um, Time is the cure to the volatility of the stock market. So the more time you have, the more risk you can afford to take. And it's true that one of the biggest risks that people face when they first retire is sequence of return risk. So it's this idea that right when you retire, if the market tanks and we experience ultra high inflation, it's kind of like a worst case recipe. So I have no doubt that when history looks back at the year 2022, it's likely that they will say that 2022 was a bad year to retire. One of the things we did in the calculator is we built something called the secure income score. And the secure income score, what it does is it looks at the amount of guaranteed income you're gonna have over your lifetime, and it compares it to all of your essential expenses. And the reason that this is important is because, and what we did was we created a benchmark and we said if 80% of your essential expenses, the, the, you know, the expenses you can't afford to live without, so it's not gonna be including things like uh, uh, a trip every year or um, Netflix subscription or something like that. These are paying the mortgage, paying the garbage bill, keeping the lights on, buying food, those types of expenses. So what we want to see when people are making this transition into retirement is have you saved enough money that you can cover 80% of your, I'm sorry, do you have enough guaranteed income that you'll be able to cover 80% of your essential expenses? So that's called the secure income score within the calculator. Now, one of the things you can do, and, and, and if you don't uh, consider purchasing an annuity from an insurance company, so if you don't pr produce some guaranteed income to at least cover that 80% benchmark, then it's true that you know, some of the biggest risks you face in retirement are mortality risk. It's you know, how long you're gonna live. And uh, the other one is market volatility. And an annuity that provides a guaranteed income stream that has a cost of living adjustment on it is really the only way to guarantee that income's gonna last for the rest of your life. 
And of course, <clears throat> anytime we talk about guarantees, it's always based on the on the claims paying ability of the insurance company. So part of your due diligence is to make sure that you're working with a strong company going forward. But you know, a lot of people, because they have social security, many people in the United States do still have pensions. So again, you just really have to look at your own personal situation and say, is more guaranteed income necessary? And if it is necessary, the only way that you can guarantee income is from an insurance company and, and an annuity contract. Mm. Yeah, in in the Netherlands where I live, uh, we have uh, three uh, layers of uh, pension fund. We have a kind of the social security that you said. Then second is uh, corporate. If somebody is employed uh, somewhere in a corporate uh, co in a, uh, a company and it pays insurance uh, pension, and then third uh, pillar is um, whatever they they arrange themselves. So you probably care of the third pillar, right? Yeah, the, the three-legged stool, if you will, has been the traditional. A lot of times today in the United States, so a lot of pensions have gone away, unless people typically, unless they work for the federal government or state governments, a lot of people don't have pensions anymore. Uh, they're getting, they've been phased out in many instances. So today, a lot of people only have a two-legged stool in the United States. They just have Social Security and they have the money that they've saved. And so that's why some people need to go out and consider purchasing guaranteed income when they retire. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. <clears throat> you know, so, one of the things I want to one of the things I want to clarify for you, though, Boris, because we are talking about the software, and you're from the Netherlands, and I'm here in the United States, is that the software that we developed does include tax uh, calculations. So, unfortunately, that the calculator is designed and built for people that live in the United States. It really wouldn't be helpful for people that live in the Netherlands. No, I understand, but we have a, a, club of, a global audience, so I believe also people from the United States will benefit from it. So uh, I would like to ask you uh, your per, uh, personal point of view, uh, personal opinion. What is the commonly held belief or uh, major misconception in your uh, uh, area of expertise, like pension, uh, uh, that you are kind of strongly disagree with? Yeah, one of the biggest mistakes people make is they assume too high of a rate of return and, and they assume that that rate of return is going to be constant. Again, the industry, the industry that I'm in is totally focused on the investment side of the equation and there's not enough emphasis put on the liability and the liability in retirement is your cash flow, it's your budget, it's your spending. So the reason, again, that we developed the calculators, we've got to get people out of this mindset. Instead of thinking about the rate of return you're going to earn on your money, think about your spending first. It's the most important number in a good retirement plan. But overestimating future rates of return, I would say, what is what gets people in a lot of trouble. And so when you're planning for the future, I always like to say, let's hope for the best, but plan for the worst. Hope for the best, plan for the worst. And as you create this model to try to understand what the future is going to look like, if you make really conservative assumptions, so you assume inflation is going to be a little bit higher than historically and rates of return are going to be lower than historically, and maybe your spending is going to be a little bit higher than what you had estimated, and maybe you're going to live a little bit longer than what your family has lived. I mean, that's all worst case planning, and that's what we want people to do. We really want them to understand What's the worst case scenario? Because again, at the end of the day, what we really want to, del to deliver to people is clarity, confidence, and freedom. Mm -hmm. And uh, with regards to taxes, you mentioned, uh, uh, what is your kind of uh, tips? Uh, how can people uh, pay uh, less taxes uh, in their time? Of, of course, it's only re relevant to United States. Uh, but just in yeah, well, one of the things that we wanted to give people the ability to do is to understand the withdrawal order and how that impacts how long their money's going to last. And so in the United States, we have different types of accounts. We have accounts that are taxable, they get taxed every year for uh, capital gains and interest income, dividend income. We have accounts that are tax deferred, retirement accounts that people save into. So like an IRA, they don't pay taxes until they pull the money out. We have tax-free accounts like uh, uh, Roth accounts and HSAs where the money comes out tax free. And so understanding the best withdrawal order can be, make a big difference in how long your money lasts. So one of the things we did, did in the calculator is we, we allow people to model different withdrawal orders so they can see, well, if I pull money out of my IRA first versus pulling money out of my Roth first, how long is my money gonna last? So that's one of the key things. Another thing that we found is in the United States, we have something called the Affordable Care Act that was passed uh, several years ago. 
And what that does is it impacts the premiums that people pay for their health insurance. Oftentimes when people retire early, say at like age 60, they have Medicare insurance that will kick in at age 65, but that means that they're going to have to self-insure for their health insurance from 60 till 65, which can be very expensive to buy private health insurance. So if we think about the best way to withdraw money out of your accounts, if we take money, say, maybe out of the Roth IRA first, and uh, we keep your uh, modified adjusted gross income low, sometimes it can help people qualify for Affordable Care Act subsidies and, and then also keep that, um, that cost very low as they transition into retirement. So there's a lot of nuances. Another thing I would say, uh, people don't really understand the taxation of Social Security and so how you're pulling money out of different accounts can affect Social Security. And uh, yeah, taxes are a big deal. You know, at the end of the day, they say it's not about how much money you make, it's about how much money you keep after Uncle Sam takes their slice. And things with like health insurance, that's not necessarily a tax, but it is a way to make sure that you're keeping your expenses as low as possible and we're thinking about um, you know, just the, the right accounts for you to draw from at the right time. Mm -hmm. Interesting. <clears throat> so if we summarize it, uh, if someone who is listening uh, to this interview would like uh, to walk away with one or two uh, major takeaways, what would it be? The, well, the number one thing, the thing I'm always pounding the desk on, I sound like a broken record, you really have to have a solid grasp of your spending. And unfortunately, a lot of times what people do is they'll say, well, I'm going to spend 80% of what I did during my working years. And that is a bad way to plan for retirement. The, the biggest mistake people make is not um, estimating, not having a really thorough grasp of how much they're going to be spending. So the number one tip I would have is create, take the time to do the hard work. Everybody wants to focus on how much they've saved, how much they've accumulated, what's the value of their real estate, what's their investments. And what I'm saying is that needs to be secondary. That is not the most important number. The most important number is how much do you spend. The other thing that I would say is you want to keep your fees as low as possible. You want to create global diversification across asset classes and sectors. And one of the last things is to really consider when you do retire, you need to think about how your money is going to work differently in retirement than it did during your working years. We created something called a bucket tab in the retirement budget calculator where we can show people the difference between how much income they have coming in, guaranteed income coming in versus what their expenses are. And then we can help them optimize a portfolio or a withdrawal strategy by thinking in terms of time segments when you're gonna need access to that money. Again, if the idea is that time is the cure to the volatility of the stock market, what we want is for some of your money to be low risk, money that's you, know, you need in the next one to three years. You don't wanna take a lot of risk with that money. And when you identify the money that you're not going to need for 10 years or more, that's where you can be more aggressive. And we, uh, we actually created a retirement bucket calculator that's available at uh, retire, uh, the retirementbudgetcalculator.com under the blog posts. You can go and you can do historical analysis to see how using a bucket strategy would work compared with something like just a static 60-40 stock bond portfolio mix. So I guess the last tip I would say is think about diversifying your money across time segments when you retire, uh, just to help deal with that sequence of return risk. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. This were all my questions. Perhaps uh, if I forgot something uh, and you, you would uh, uh, like to add, uh, please go ahead, perhaps uh, where people can find your books and your websites or anything else you would like to add. Well, thank you. Yeah, it's retirementbudgetcalculator.com is the website. I've got two books out. Sound Retirement Planning was my first book, and my new book is Retirement Calculator, How Much Money Do I Need to Retire? Both of them are available on Amazon, probably the easiest way for people to buy the books. Um, you know, I would say that the last thing I want to say here is remember that the idea is you want to have clarity, what's most important in your life. You want to have confidence to know the numbers are, are going to work, and then we want you to have freedom so that you can go out and live your best life. At the end of the day, this is not how most people want to spend all of their time is thinking about their money. We want to maximize their life. We want to make sure that they're getting the most out of their time with the people that they care the most about. And one of the things I found is that, you know, um, you can have all the money in the world, but if you don't have your health and you don't have somebody to enjoy it with, it is meaningless. And so you just want to make sure that you're prioritizing relationships and you're putting people first and that. Um, you're really thinking about what does it mean to live your best life and how do you design that? And money should just be a tool that's helping you to 
foster those deeper relationships, have a, have a stronger, healthier community, helping people, mentoring people. I mean, that's, that's where all the joy of life comes from. It doesn't come from having more money in the bank. In fact, some of the most depressed people I've met are some of the people that have the most money. So that's I would just terrific. say, yeah, so clarity about what's most important. Confidence, that's where the calculator can help you crunch the numbers, at least for the folks in the USA. And then freedom, you know, freedom to go, go out and live your best life with the people you care the most about, doing the things you've always wanted to do. That's, and I'm excited that we can help people do that. And I'm excited, Boris, that you've given me the opportunity to share what we're doing. Thank you so much. Absolutely. This is a very important topic. And I believe I, I know that our audience is a little bit, uh, a lot of people more than uh, in your uh, kind of age, <laughs> more than 50. So maybe they are preparing uh, to, to, they are thinking about uh, retirement planning and uh, it will, your interview will uh, certainly help them uh, to, to make some uh, right uh, steps in the right direction. So Jason, thanks again for your time and um, I wish you uh, happy, uh, it was a, a day after Thanksgiving, but you, you uh, wish you thank, happy Thanksgiving and uh, the rest of the year with all this um, uh, good uh, vacations and uh, new, new year and Christmas in front of us. So <laughs> I hope uh, we will maybe uh, speak again in a few months about a new topic or something like this. Boris, thank you so much. Yeah, I think it's so cool that we get to connect all the way across the world and have this conversation yeah. and, and yeah, see each yeah. other. So thank thanks, th thanks for the work you're doing. Absolutely. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.